Hey guys, Gatha TV here with another Diablo 4 build guide video for the Necromancer. And in this one, we're going to talk about the Sever Shadow Nancer, Necromancer, whatever you want to call it. It's a shadow based Necromancer. And the gameplay footage is showing you uh, is going to be me being behind in levels, but not by too much this time. Uh, and it's very important to point out that the gear I'm wearing in this footage is completely designed to be scaled to the Bone Spear build, meaning we are lacking significant scaling for this build specifically. I also decided not to equip any of the damage scaling codex powers and simply settled with the incredibly strong aspect of disobedience. This aspect that it provides us with a stacking amount of armor when we deal any damage to enemies. It's also important to point out that we are sacrificing all of our minions with this build, which makes us be the only target for enemies to hit, presenting a higher pressure of scaling our defenses for the build to feel smooth in play. A full-blown detailed guide for the build is of course linked in the descriptions below, including best-in-slot pieces, skill tree, and a paragon board before the launch of the game. Rotation-wise, it can be a bit trickier to grasp than the other Necromancer builds, so we want to cast Blight on enemies, followed by Reap, as this guarantees a corpse to be spawned, which will then explode to create another pool of damage over time on the ground, and then make sure the enemies are cursed by our Decrepify, and now we'll dump all our essences by casting Sever. When you're completely drained, you'll clear the corpses with corpse explosions, stacking the damage over time pools even more. Make sure there is a blight pool on the ground and the curse is on the enemies, then repeat this process till everything is literally dead. What's really cool with this build is that not only does the damage rotation ramp up your DPS significantly the longer you spend fighting it, but it also keeps you consistently tanky and provide heavy crowd control on enemies in the form of both slow effect and stuns that will even stun the endgame bosses, as you can see in the gameplay footage here. Due to the layers of crowd control and the build, it provides you the, the fact that you can lower your DPS output and play it at a safe distance, essentially kiting enemies, should you find yourself not being able to face tank them. The gameplay footage you're watching is showing the first capstone dungeon, upon which the build, despite lacking proper scaling modifiers, are still able to straight up face tank the endgame boss in here. Once you're able to level with this build, I firmly believe that the combination of Reaper Skeletons and Bone Spear is a significantly smoother leveling experience. You can check out the leveling guide, link the descriptions below, and move over to this build if you'd like to, before you decide to run the Capstone Dungeon itself. Now again, I can't stress how important it is to point out that the gear that we're using is scaling the Bone Spear build and not the actual Shadow build, and we're also not having any significant bonuses to our damage output for our dots, neither from modifiers on our gear nor from Codex powers, and still we're able to do this type of performance and tank the enemies. I think this is an incredible build, and I can't wait to show the endgame and test the actual best-in-slot pieces for this specific build, as it can do some crazy things like having 100% uptime of a Bone Storm, for example, some absolutely crazy things in there. Similar to the Bone Mancer build, this build will be using nodes such as the Hued Flesh, making our lucky hit have a chance to generate corpses. We're also using the Grim Harvest to get uh, essences back when we're consuming corpses, as the whole gameplay is all about making sure we apply the Decrepify Curse, making sure there's a Blight Pool on the ground, generate corpses through a Reap, and then just smacking up all our essences in the Sever. And once we are drained, we are applying tons and tons and tons of corpse explosions for more damage over time, and just rinse repeat this process. It's just a smooth gameplay. And whilst we're consuming corpses and generating them, we're actually will be getting the debuff, the defensive scaling buff being fortify and allowing us to do some absolutely crazy performance with this in mind. I've had a lot of fun, and I'll be honest, I think that outside of the craziness that you can achieve with the Bone Spear build, I think this build is literally one of my favorites in this game so far. I can't wait to see how this will perform with the absolute top tier gear and the highest of levels, and comparing this to the Bone Spear build, is this was really fun to play, especially with it being so tanky and reliable, and it was just so fun to see that damage output ramp up so hard while still being able to face tank everything at the same time as you're having tons of crowd control at the same time. I don't think this is very optimal for the sake of speed clearing since it's not it's instantaneously applied damage. It is instead a ramp up for the build to work. Now, when it comes to the legendary aspects or the codex aspects, I think it's very important to point out that the most important one here is the aspect of disobedience ramping up our defensive scaling. This is a um, codex power you get from the Halls of the Damned in the Act Kegistan, 
And uh, that is the most important one to get because it's the defensive scaling one. However, when it comes to offensive scaling modifiers, there's quite a few different ones that you can pick up. Most importantly, what I think uh, I, I would recommend for single target output would be after the Havasar Act, you can pick up a aspect called Blighted Aspect, which will ramp up our Keystone or Key Passive Shadow Blight to do significantly more damage. And uh, there's a couple of others you can do uh, when it comes to damage output in general, but I do believe firmly that this build makes best performance by having the defensive Codex powers, and as you're leveling it, the fewer powers you are considering to be mandatory for the build to function, the better. But again, as mentioned a few times already, having gear that actually scales your damage output is incredibly important. It was very noticeable that the damage output could have been significantly higher should I had damage that damage against slowed enemies, damage over time, and shadow damage, or even level of my shadow abilities would have significantly been a much better performing for, uh, display than what you're seeing in, this, in the gameplay footage, which still, with ease, handled the capstone dungeon. Now, a few uh, things around this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and the gameplay footage of this Shadow Sever, uh, Mancer, Necromancer, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the links are in the descriptions below. On launch, there will be a drop thing called a uh, support a streamer event where you can give two subs and receive in-game transmog. If you want to do that and support this channel, I'd be very welcome to uh, welcome you into our Twitch channel, uh, twitch.tv slash TV. So I'll see you guys there, upon which I'll be racing to 100 as a necromancer. However, I'll do so in softcore. Since I've had an unfair advantage with having access to the pre-release, I will not be doing hardcore, as I have no intentions in participating in the uh, Lilith Shrine reward being having this type of advantage so i'll be doing softcore for that reason alone i hope you guys will tune in and have some fun with us i'm very excited for it and hope you guys will have a great time in sanctuary on diablo 4 launch coming this 2nd of june so till next time boys make sure you hit the like button subscribe for more content and i'll catch you guys in the next video till then as always stay safe keep rocking